Hi, I'm Anthony Sale, and in this video, we are continuing with our motivation and basic ideas on Bayesian optimization. We will here present the abstract goal of Bayesian optimization and the basic methodological details. So let's go with this. In a prior video, we discussed the difference between deterministic optimization and Bayesian versions of it. In a deterministic setting, we had a function which, let's say, took one millisecond to compute and with some tangent planes, tangent parabolas, gradient, hessian or other convexity assumptions, linearity or whatever, then algorithms were devised to obtain the minimum in a hopefully fast way. On the other hand, we had Bayesian optimization in which the basic idea was that my function was considered to be a random variable. So instead of f of x being a cosinus of whatever, f of x will be cosinus of whatever in mean, but it will have some variant, so 95% of times will be, you know, plus minus two standard deviations, for instance. So at each x, my function was a random variable. That was the basic statistical model, so that the basic assumption is that I do not actually know the value of f of x until I go and I evaluate it. I mean, the same happens with deterministic optimization, isn't it? Yes, it is, but in deterministic optimization, they sort of assume that, you know, I compute a Taylor series so that knowing the value and the derivatives at some point, I can extrapolate to other points. But in this Bayesian optimization, the stuff is carried out with somehow formula for random variables. In the next video, we'll discuss the most suitable application domains for each of the techniques. Okay, nevertheless, we have this random mean and variance for each f of x. So my prior statistical models are a set of, you know, something like random functions, stochastic processes, in which I have a mean function, I have a confidence interval, upper and lower bounds, and we also discussed that in order for these functions to be continuous, and in fact, you know, differentiable or twice differentiable or etc, etc, we need to impose further constraints apart from the mean and variance of each individual f of x. Indeed, we need to impose that if I take a value of my function at this point and at close points, then they cannot be independent random variables because the statistical correlation must tend to one as points get close together. So the correlation is related to covariance. And then the way to solve this is defining suitable covariance kernels so that the covariance between the functions at two points A and B will be defined by some kappa stuff, which depends on the ascissa A, B. And most of the times in applications, at least at the first approximation, it depends just on the distance between A and B. So those covariance kernels are the missing bit in order to infuse, apart from randomness, issues with continuity, the smoothness, and whatever. Again, this is material for a whole book on stochastic processes. We are just sketching the first glimpse on what those things mean. So we now can state the main goal of Bayesian optimization. And it is to acquire information to reduce the uncertainty so that, well, this was my prior thought on what the function is. And then after acquiring some samples, my uncertainty is reduced close to the sample points. So acquire information to reduce uncertainty. This is kind of an identification problem and it's somehow the goal of Bayesian optimization. But okay, we are not idiots. And if the only thing we wish to estimate is the optimum, then somehow sampling here would be sort of useless in the sense that, okay, look at the lower confidence bound. 
it's well above the upper confidence bound in this green region. So the probability that the random variable here takes a value which is lower than the random variable here, you know, then it means that only one in a thousand times will have this value and only one in a thousand times will have this value here. So it's only one in a million times the probability that the orange region will achieve an optimal value instead of the green region. So with this basic idea, if I am into identification and modeling, I want to reduce uncertainty everywhere. But if I am in optimization, which is the particular goal of Bayesian optimization, then it is nonsense designing experiments that sample the orange region. So most of my experiments will try to sample the green region in which at least intuitively, I guess that there will be a high likelihood that the optimal value is there. So we acquire information, not everywhere, but only where there is high probability of finding the optimum or short of. So the objective of Bayesian optimization is designing the sampling strategy, design of experiments in which I will evaluate the function f and the ideas would be either, you know, to sample points in which there is high likelihood of finding the optimum. That would be what we call an exploitatory greedy strategy. Or in other cases, maybe the best option would be to acquire as many bits of information as possible from my samples so that I later on can be better informed about the location of the optimum. So an exploitatory strategy would maybe think on, okay, sample here because it's, you know, the lowest point in confidence bound, in mean, whatever. This will be the point with highest probability of finding the optimum. But, well, maybe another strategy would be saying that, okay, the optimum may be anywhere in this interval. So I'd rather sample here and here to be able to reduce my uncertainty and then the third sample will exploit. So it samples here and here and then as they were above the mean I was unlucky so third sample is over here. So at this kind of discussions of course and the right balance between exploitation just sampling where I think the optimum will be or exploration acquire information, acquire bits of entropy on the location of the optimal point is what guides the theoretical developments in Bayesian optimization. And in fact, Bayesian optimization techniques mostly follow this basic methodology in which the first step is building a prior encoding some mean function, maybe from a deterministic model and some uncertainty bounds and some covariance to define smoothness and correlation as a function of distance. So I encode that. And once I have my prior, then I sample at some, at some points, getting measurements of the function values, in some cases with some measurement noise. And so I use some Bayes formula or well, you know, in the Gaussian process, the conditional, posterior, Gaussian distribution, whatever, we'll review it in a second. And the thing is that once I have the samples, I use this formula to build a posterior so that, well, when I have observations, then my uncertainty at those points is greatly reduced. If I have no noise, I will have zero uncertainty. And if I have some measurement noise, let's say, I will have a little confidence band, which roughly will be the width of the measurement noise confidence interval, then I reduce uncertainty there. And of course, in points close to them, because if the function is continuous, close points must be close to my measurements. So there are some formulas to give me these new confidence bands. And then once I obtain those posterior estimates, then I do some statistical analysis 
of that posterior to the domain which will be the best next point to samples to acquire more information or to yield a likely lowest value. Then I sample that, I incorporate it to the historical record and repeat and repeat again until my sample budget is exhausted or until, you know, I can assert with a 99.9% .9 likelihood that I found the optimum value. So this is the basic methodology in Bayesian optimization. And well, with this basic summary of the methodology, set a prior, get samples, compute a posterior, and decide next sample, repeating until some termination criteria are met, then we will conclude the video here. And next video will present a fast overview on the third and fourth steps, the posterior computation and the decision on next sample. So we finish the video here. Thanks for watching.